The other day we spoke about the two uh, kinds of truth, the conventional and the ultimate. <coughs> on the level of the conditional, uh, con- uh, on the level of the conventional, we, we see there is a beginning, there is an end to everything. There is birth, there is death, there is being and non-being. And we know that these notions are are useful also. We spoke about the the birth, uh, the date of birth, birthday. And without um, the beginning, a day of birth, we cannot establish an identity card. So birth and death is important. Above and below is important. Left and right is important. They are useful on the level of the conventional truth. Politically, you have to know whether you are on the right or on the left. But there is uh, another dimension of truth, it's called the ultimate. And scientists uh, of our time, they, they are trying to touch the ultimate. Because when they go into the uh, world of the sub, uh, sub-atomic atomic, uh, reality, they have to abandon the notions and their ideas. They learn to release uh, the appearance, the sign. The particle is a sign. The wave is also a sign. And if a scientist is caught in the sign of particle or wave, they cannot uh, see the real nature of the electron. Uh, on the conventional uh, level, a particle can only uh, be a particle, it cannot be a wave. Because they have two different forms, like the cloud and the tea, they have different forms. But looking deeply, they are the same. A particle can be at the same time a wave, and if you can see it, you have not been able to understand the nature of either the wave or the, or the particle. A particle has a specific uh, location in space. But when you see it as a wave, that specific place in, the, in space uh, disappears. And uh, if you go deeply, one thing can be everywhere at the same time. The principle of uh, non-locality. So we are leaving the world of conventional truth in order to go to a deeper level. And now scientists have uh, spent a lot of time struggling in order to be able to release their notions, their ideas, uh, their sign in order to be able to begin to understand the world of um, sub-atomic world. There is uh, the classical science represented by Newton. And there is there's a lot of truth uh, in that uh, in that science. But they cannot explain everything. That is why you have to go to modern science, the quantum physics. And quantum physics has stated stated many things that contradict, that seem to contradict the things stated by classical science. So modern physics is something like the ultimate 
and there is a difficulty in connecting the two kinds of uh, science, the classical science and the modern science. You recognize that there is truth in the classical science and there is truth in the modern science, but on the appearance they contradict each other. And we need uh, some kind of link in order to connect the two. But in the Buddhist tradition, that's something that can help us connect from one level of truth to another level of truth is very clear. And that kind of distinction, that kind of uh, connection may be helpful for us to see uh, the true nature of birth and death. This is uh, the level of the conventional truth. And we can see it, the notion, we can see in it the notion of beginning, ending, birth and death, being and non-being, sameness and otherness. They are, they are pairs of opposites everywhere. <coughs> there are you and me, there is father, there are father and son, and they are not each other's. They are distinct from each other. Man is different from uh, animals, and animals are different from vegetables. Vegetables are different from uh, minerals, and there's a separation like that, and things are outside of each other. But when we observe uh, closely, we don't see it anymore. We see that things are inside of each other. Father is inside of the son. Son is inside of father. You cannot remove father from son. So you go to the second level of truth. It's called the ultimate truth. And on this level, there is no beginning. There is no end. There is no birth. There is no death and the notions of being and non-being are removed. And there is absolutely f- absolute freedom in that. Here we, ha- we see the distinction, the, the, the extinction, the removal of all notions and concepts. And the two kinds of truths seem to contradict each other. But there is a a link, a way connecting uh, the conventional truth with the ultimate truth. So, so we draw something like uh, the Z of Zoro. And it is uh, this, this uh, line representing the practice of meditation that can lead us to the conven- from the conventional truth to the ultimate truth. This, uh, this represented inside of emptiness. Emptiness. And we know that emptiness does not mean nothingness. Look at this glass. It's, it's, it's empty. It's empty. But the glass is empty. But that does not mean that the glass is not there, right? So emptiness is quite different from from nothingness. And emptiness is always emptiness of something. It is empty of uh, tea. I agree. But it is not empty of air, it's full of air. So to be empty means to be empty of something.
And then when that is why when we hear uh, the Bodhisattva Avalokita say everything is empty, we have to ask Mr. Bodhisattva, you say that everything is empty, but empty of what? <laughs> and he would tell us that uh, everything is empty of a separate existence. Like uh, that flower, the flower is full of the cosmos. When you look into a flower, you see the whole cosmos in it. Time, space, sunshine, earth, consciousness, everything in the cosmos have to come together and then in order to have a flower to manifest as a wonder of life. And the flower belongs to the kingdom of God. It is full of cosmos, but it is empty of a separate self. Because if we remove all the non-flower elements, there is no flower left. So the nature of the flower is emptiness. Emptiness means the fullness of everything, but empty of a separate existence. You cannot be by yourself alone. You have to interbe with all of us. And that is the word man and the meaning of emptiness. If we remove uh, ancestors, father, uh, mother, education, food, uh, tradition, there is no us left. We are made of non-us elements. It does not mean that we are not there. We are well there. But we don't have a separate existence. So that's why the word to be can be misleading. In fact, that is to interbe. To be is impossible. To interbe is the truth. Like when you look at the sun, you see that the sun cannot be without the father. The sun has to be interbe with the father, with the mother, with the grandfather, with the grandmother, with everything else. And that is emptiness. So emptiness represents the ultimate truth. <laughs>